Hi, I'm Sylvie of High Level Bandanas. If you are here, it's because you want to learn how to make oh, this skirt that I'm currently doing a voiceover for right now. So I haven't really done anything like this before. Usually I only write a written pattern. And then if you get the written pattern, I have like an unlisted video that you get through a link in the pattern, which just explains strictly the measurements and things in the video. This one's gonna be a little bit different. Obviously you are watching it, it is public. It's not just from the pattern, but this video is gonna go through my A to Z process. You're gonna see my process from start to finish. It's gonna be pretty raw. Not gonna hide anything from you guys. Crochet is not perfect, you make mistakes, and you're gonna see everything from A to Z, so there you go. I do recommend getting the written pattern. There is a lot better and clearer instructions. You can get the written pattern on my website, or you can also get it on my Etsy and on my Ravelry. And with that said, I did put a poll up to see if you guys wanted just a tutorial or if you wanted it to be just me and my chaos kind of vlog version, and you guys decided that it would be this. So I'm keeping this entire 20 minutes of vlog footage slash tutorial, and it is all your fault. This is day one of the whole process. And by day one of the process, I mean, it's in my head right now. <laughs> I do have it mapped out. And once it's in my head, for me, I can kind of just type it up, make it what have you. So you'll kind of witness my whole process of how we're gonna do this from start to finish. And by start, I mean right now with it right in my head. So what I think I'll do with this one is essentially a very long rectangle and every four inches, again, I'm not sure because I haven't quite made it yet or at all, I'll fold it over. So let's say we've got two inches, fold it over one inch. There will be two different types of pleats. So the ones that just go overlapping each other once and then the ones that go overlapping each other kind of twice and you'll see it'll make sense let's get started with just that part to the yarn stash so i'm thinking i'm gonna go with this blue it is medium weight or worsted weight but it kind of flattens down to something a little bit thinner if this is the peckable uh by loops and threads and sapphire and i think i'm gonna go with this one just because i do have two skeins of it i've got this as well i may have accidentally purchased navy thinking it was this sapphire one um but oh well this is the same yarn that i used for the blueberry pocket cardigan you can't really see it right now because the lighting is absolutely horrible and then i want to add a stripe to give it that more anime schoolgirl feel i'm just gonna use one of these skeins of white here i have a ton of them this is the bernat super value natural Ooh. Oh, I can even use some scrap, which is pretty nice stash busting right now. So the way that I think this skirt is going to go is I'm going to have this top band on it. And then starting from this area down will be the pleated part. Okay, so I started writing the pattern and I realized that I don't want like a whole band this thick. I think I just want the band to be about this thick and then the pleats to start down. So if you're at this part of the pattern, just measure from your waist down. If I want it halfway down my thigh from that spot, I would have to do about 12 inches in length. So I'm gonna go ahead and chain up to 12 inches with my blue yarn. All right, so there's my chain and there's my 12 inches. I'm using a size four hook. Um, just because I do want this to be tighter since it's something that's going to be covering my bottom. <laughs> so I think that's self-explanatory. For 12 inches, I did 55 chains. So now I'm just going to go ahead and pick a stitch. I don't want to pick a stitch that's going to be too loose because I do want it to cover, but I don't want it to be too tight just because we're also going to be folding it. So it's going to be a lot of fabric at the top. I just did a row with single crochet and I didn't like it, so I frogged it. Uh, and I'm gonna start again with half double crochet. And as you can see, half double crochet is still gonna be kind of a tight stitch. Well, this is the back. But while it's a tight stitch, I also like that since it's gonna be downwards, we're gonna see a little bit of a stripe. I think it'll be the best stitch. Okay, I'm losing my daylight here, so I'll probably continue tomorrow, but I am now kind of all the way down to the bottom. And I know that I'm gonna want two white stripes. So for this, I want my white stripes to be four stitches each. That's just looking at it, how wide I know that I'm gonna want them. So what I did is counting up from the bottom of the skirt, I'm gonna be leaving four blue, then I want four white, 
then another four blue, and then another four white. Which brings me here. Can I be adding in my white now? Just using this little scrap bit that you guys saw earlier. Me from the future here, I had originally filmed the kind of tutorial on how to do color changes in the lighting you just previously saw, which was absolutely horrible. I'm going to refilm that. So yes, this is out of sequence, but it's just so you guys get a way better visual and explanation. So like I said, this is out of sequence. So as you can see, this is not my foundation chain anymore. This is a lot of rows in. Once you get down to the area I just explained in the last portion of the video where you're going to want um, however many stripes you want. And again, this could be on any part of your skirt, but for me, it just wanted it to look like this with four, 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 and four, which is gonna give it this striping look. So once you get down to here, and again, pretend this is your foundation chain, I've half double crocheted all the way up to this point. What I'll do next is grab my white strand or introduce my white yarn in and pull through. So that's how we're going to be able to do a seamless color change. Now you guys are looking at the right side of the piece. This is the wrong side. So you can see on the wrong side, I'm carrying my yarn through and I will get to that. What I'm going to want to do is keep going with the white. So yarn over and half double crochet for the four and then same thing once i want to change to my blue i have made my half double crochet but i haven't pulled through yet so now i'm going to drop the white grab my blue and pull through one thing that's really important what i'm doing is i'm actually crocheting over this loose strand on the other side so as you can see here the blue is in the stitch. And I'm gonna show that once we get on the back side. So let me keep going with this and then I will show you guys what to do once we get to the wrong side. Okay, so once I'm at the end of my row like this, I'll just be doing a chain one and turning my piece. So this is how your skirt is gonna be the entire way. It's just gonna be rows of half double crochet, chain one and turn. Put your color changes wherever you need your color changes. This is now the back side now that we've turned. As you can see, I've left my white strand here because I didn't need it for the rest here. Since we're on the wrong side of the piece, it's a little bit different. So I've gone ahead and done my four blue. As you can see, I haven't pulled through yet because I'm about to change my color. I want to flip my thread onto the wrong side because we're always going to be keeping any yarn or any loose thread on the wrong side of the piece. If you guys just introduced your white in the previous row, you'll be crocheting over that end as well so that you don't have to sew it in later. I'm going to switch to my white, so I'll grab my white strand and pull through. So since this is the wrong side, this time I'm going to be able to show you how to crochet over your strand a little bit better. So I'll yarn over. Make sure that my blue strand is staying on the wrong side at all times. And I'm just going to do my half double crochets over the blue strand. Perfect. And then once I get to my next color change, same thing. So the white's going to come on the wrong side. I'm going to pull through with my blue. Make sure this is nice and snug. And continue crocheting over the white like so. So there you go, that's how you make color changes and I will skip back to the last you saw now. Now that I've got these done and you can see it'll be upright like this, which you can't see because my sweater is the exact same color. Okay, but now that I'm at the end of my row like this, what I'm gonna do is just chain one, Turn my work and continue with my, oh, I've got a little interruption here. Ah. So I'm going to keep doing that for a couple more rows and I'll probably get back to you tomorrow once I have a little bit more daylight happening. <laughs> The next day I finally have daylight, so it'll be a little bit easier to show you guys what I'm doing. I am wearing my Hey Dude sweater with my little bows. It's a doodle because <laughs> and if you like this sweater, it is available as a written pattern with video instructions on my website as well as on my Etsy and on my Ravelry. So 
check it out if you like this sweater. I love this sweater. And I've gone ahead and I've crocheted to about eight inches of width. And I'm gonna show you guys what I mean with all the pleats. We're gonna go ahead and use just a regular kitchen towel for this. The fabric that I made is a little bit hard to show you on. So a single pleat, if I just fold it over the one time like this, it'll make one pleat, clip it into place. And then my second one would be the same length. You can also measure these and I do suggest measuring them. And so then you've got these pleats that go all in the same direction. So at the top, you can see I left a little bit like one inch in between. You can make these closer together. You can make these further apart. So that is the single pleat. So I would keep going, just folding them all in the same direction, making sure they're the same distance apart and the same width. For the double pleat, so the one that I would like to make, I'm gonna fold about an inch inwards. And then instead of doing like the single one where you fold all in the same direction, instead of folding it under like this, I'm gonna fold my pleat over the rest of the fabric. So as you can see with this one, the pleat stands out. So there's two folds underneath and then the top looks like this. So this is the double pleat version. So as you can see, the pleat stands out like this. And that's the version that I'm going to be going with. There you go. Here's my pleat number one. So obviously this will probably need to be ironed later just so that the pleats stay a little bit better in place, but it kind of already gives the effect I want. So the bottom's a little bit more flared out. We've got the pleat at the top. The pleat is two inches and I've got my one inch folds on the top. I'm gonna keep doing this for quite a while. You'll wanna keep pleating until you get the entire circumference of your waist. So I've pre-measured, my waist is 24 inches. You can just kind of free ball it as well and just kind of keep pleating until you put both ends together at the back that they match up. I'm going to pre-measure and make sure that I've got <laughs> I'm gonna make sure that I do have my 24 inches just so that it does fit perfectly and properly. I'm a little bit angry right now because I had to add in a new skein. I double checked this is sapphire and yet it was not from the same color batch. You cannot quite tell under this lighting, but just this row up to here. Oh well, at least this part will be in the back because the zipper will be here and then this will be folded to another pleat soon. We're a few hours later and I now have two pleats and looks like that gives me uh, about seven inches of width. I also decided between my pleats that I would leave an inch. That way my pleats aren't super close together. Here's the bottom versus the top with my little inch in between and that's what I'm gonna keep doing. So, yeehaw. I'm a little late for this, but I figured I would get this little ring light tripod set up so that I don't have to try to film my tutorial reels, putting my phone between my knees and then trying to angle it so that you can see my hands. So we're gonna try, <laughs> we're gonna try that from this point onwards. So, well, you can't tell me it's not an improved, whoa. It is officially day three of working on this project and I just wanted to show you guys how far I have gotten last night. So I did quite a bit of work on it while I was watching the new season of RuPaul's Drag Race. Here's how far I've gotten. It's kind of a weird thing because you look at how much you've done with the bottom, but then you look at the pleats at the top and how short it is <laughs> compared to how much you've actually done. We're definitely getting there. I'm very hopeful and so far I really do like it. I think it's quite cute. Then I had a little bit of a dog emergency this morning. We woke up and her eye was kind of swollen shut. I guess she has conjunctivitis. So I had a little bit of a freak out and that delayed the amount that I was able to work on this. I also volunteered to do a pattern test. I'm not sure why I did that to myself. The pattern is really cute. It is the new Vintage Kitchen Collection by Autumn Olive Crochets. You guys should totally check that out. I'll probably put a little photo of it here. Um, and I'm doing the Hershey's one. I actually bought two Hershey chocolate bars and I told myself I cannot eat them until I finish this. So I should probably get started on that. All right, it is day four today and I have gotten about this far, which is not bad at all. I'm very excited to finish this. My outfit today 
because I will be filming a reel for the bookworm polo, which is what I'm wearing right now. I know I'm doing a whole bunch of shameless plugs right now. By the time you see this video, this will be out already. I feel like now I'm gonna need to make one of these skirts to match this. <music> Why do you always look like you're having an existential crisis? This is day six since I have started this project and I'm about to measure it. I think I'm done all the pleats. Never mind. I need four more inches. So it looks like I'm going to have to do one more pleat. One inch on this side and then a two inch pleat and then another inch. Yes, that'll make sense. Four more inches. Here's what it looks like so far. I am very excited. day seven of me working on this project and to be honest I have been slacking all this to say this is the same progress that I had last time and so I'm hoping that I'll be able to finish this part tonight I do have a yarn convention to go to today here in Calgary and so I've decided to wear the colorful version of my bookworm polo with my little pearls we'll see how that goes and we'll see if I can hopefully get back into finishing the skirt Okay, I am back. I did get a few things. I got these really beautiful skeins from Sea Panda Yarns. They're the only ones left in this color that were worsted weight. So I got these on clearance. They were $20 a skein instead of 30. So I went ahead and got four. I'm not entirely sure what I wanna make with them though. So leave your suggestions if you have any. I also got these really, really beautiful stitch markers from Ocean Loops Studio. A little witch hat that says wizard in training. And then we've got this one, which is supposed to be a labradorite, labrad, labradorite. I don't know how to, I don't know gemstones. I don't know how to say it. Ignore this really janky setup. That's my ring light. But as you can kind of see, it is reaching almost 24. This is the worst angle and still bad lighting. Don't buy a $20 ring light. And let's see if it fits all the way around. Woohoo! Now, if you do want to avoid some sewing, I do recommend that you try and finish with your hook at the very top of your piece. So as you can see, this is the bottom of the skirt. My hook is at the top. And that's just so that in the next row, once we chain one, we'll be able to just continue straight into the band. Another thing to note here is that we will be adding a zipper. I know that it's gonna be just about a millimeter or two wide. Keep that into account. If you need to add or remove a row, depending on the width of your zipper and how you want to place it. If you're thinking of doing a button up instead, then what you're gonna wanna do is just add one more row. What I mean with the button thing is, let's say I wanted to close it here and I had buttons on this side, I would need to have holes on this side, which is gonna kill one of the rows. So go one more row so that when they overlap like this for your buttons to go over, that you still have that extra row. It is the next day. I'm just in my pajamas. But as you saw last night, I managed to finish all the pleated parts of the skirt. So I'm pretty happy about that. First off, what I'm gonna do is I'm done with my white. So I'm just gonna go ahead and tie this off because I'm finally done working with the two colors. Okay, well, apparently this morning I'm not allowed to crochet. If like me, you finish with your hook at the top of your piece. So I think we can all agree this is the bottom and then the pleated top is the top. You'll just, <laughs> you'll be chaining one and then we're going to keep this yarn attached because we'll be crocheting across the top. If you want your band to be a different color, then you can tie off and attach in the corner. If you finished with your hook at the bottom of your piece, you'll tie off, weave in your ends, and you'll be attaching at the top corner of your piece. Once you've attached or you've chained one, you'll be placing a half double crochet in every single row that you did on your skirt. So it's kind of hard to tell. Here's a row, here's a row, here's a row. So they would be all at the top. That was a horrible description. Once you get to a pleat, you can see my clamp is in for my pleat and I have half double crocheted up to the pleat. Take my clamp off, make sure my pleat is still squeezed into place and I'm going to be placing my half double crochet through both of these layers. So you can see layer one, 
layer two where it's folded. Whoops, I'm shaking the camera. Pull through and half double crochet. As you can see now, they're just, it's just my half double crochet row. But if I look at the front, this pleat is completely secured in. So it's like if it sews it into place without you actually having to sew, you're just crocheting. There you go, we're getting really started with the pleats, the skirt's coming together. I'm gonna continue crocheting all the way across and then I will come back. All right, so this is done. It looks a little wonky right now because like I said, I think I'm probably gonna have to either iron or block the pleats. Let's just make sure that this still fits. There you go, it still fits all the way across. So if you try it on, like I just did, if it's too big or if it's too small, you're gonna have to readjust it. If it is too small after you've done that, it might be because you didn't put enough half double crochets and then you'll have to go again and place more. If it's too big, you might've put too many half double crochets and then you can go back and place less. You can also adjust it by reforming your pleats. So make them a little bit wider or a little bit smaller. And once you're done that, you will be doing a chain one turn. <laughs> was the most aggressive turn ever and half double crochet across you're gonna keep doing that until you get the band width that you would like so i think i'm gonna go ahead and do at least three more rows of this for a total of four rows of half double crochet on my band and i'll come back oh and while i'm at it here's a way better view of it so you can see all the half double crochets at the top and how it holds the pleats down together waistband is complete before i sew in the zipper i'm going to tie this off and i'm gonna weave in all the ends that i've left and then I will move on to the zipper. Welcome to my craft room. It is mildly chaotic. So the plan is I got this zipper, which is a navy blue, and it matches this pretty darn good. And then I do have some navy thread as well, so I'm going to spool that, and then I'm gonna get sewing. I should say, if you are planning to put in buttons, because it is a lot simpler than putting in a zipper, you can just sew your buttons on the side and then because it's half double crochet and it's kind of a big stitch finger can even like fit through it right so your buttons will just fit in you don't need to add an extra row that would be the simplest way to do it i like the idea of having a zipper because it's just a little bit more secure and i'm gonna go ahead and use my sewing machine for this today if it's easier for you and if you are patient you can hand sew this on uh oh so i've gone ahead and placed my zipper foot i've threaded my thread i suppose through the machine and i'm ready to sew on a zipper if you have never sewed a zipper on before i definitely recommend looking up a youtube tutorial especially for yarn and i'm not the person to learn from i'm not great at sewing so <laughs> don't learn from this i can just sew it on directly like this because there's no ends with yarn that we'll need to hide if that makes any sense i've got one side of it done i'll get the other side done well, there's a zipper. The color's a little bit more standout that I wanted. It probably could have been black and been better. As I showed you, I've got my zipper in. The bottom right now is still open. Obviously, that's going to be something that I'm going to sew together with yarn just for a little bit more consistency. I'm never going to use this yarn again. It sucks. You guys have probably noticed already that it absorbs every single piece of lint or dog hair or whatever that's in my house it's one of these yarns that splits it pulls apart super easy with that said i'm gonna go ahead and sew this bottom part my favorite sewing method is the invisible seam so it's right sides outwards and then you just kind of zigzag through from the top under like this it's again really hard to see i did not pick the best color of yarn for a tutorial i understand <laughs> basically it's really nice because you can kind of just go over like so and then when you're ready for everything to tighten up you just pull and it brings everything together so it's super satisfying oh it kind of covered the bottom of my zipper here so i didn't actually have to sew anything in which is really nice i do really regret <laughs> the choice of zipper color to the ironing station now. Now, let the record show again that I'm not a professional sewer. Ironing falls into that category. I've set it to synthetic because I'm using really cheap acrylic yarn for the skirt and that's plastic. That will melt. I think that your best bet here would actually be to just block it. I don't have the patience for that though. So if you go ahead and block it, you are smarter than me. And it, it might melt, it might melt, but you know what? <laughs> Living life on the edge today. I've ironed it. You can't really, can't really see anything, but 
Time to try it on. And that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please let me know, give me feedback. It's my first time doing something like this as you can probably tell. So let me know what I can improve. Let me know anything else that you'd like to see. If you do make it, definitely go tag me. It's just high level bandanas. But I do love to see your work, share your work. If you do make it, please, please, please show me. So thank you so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video if I do decide to make one and if you guys like this. <laughs> okay, bye.